Hi guys, welcome back to uh, Super Math for You. This is Mr. Rego, and today we're going to go over the PERT exam. This is a review booklet by done by Valencia College, and the idea for today is to go over topics uh, that will put you either on intermediate algebra or college algebra. Let's go. The first one that we have here is uh, solve for x, all right, and we have an inequality. As we can see, we have two inequality symbols, and we have the x in the middle. As an irregular equation, the idea is to solve for x. I want to leave the x by itself. So in this case, uh, I'm going to cancel the 5. This is negative, so I add 5. And because I have two inequality symbols, I will add 5 in the middle, 5 in the right side, and 5 in the left side. 5's cancel, and I have 3x in the middle. Less than 4 plus 5 is 9, and here 2 plus 5 is 7. The last step that I want to do is leave the x by itself. I divide by 3, divide by 3, and now I can I reduce the 7 and 3? No, so that will give me 7 divided by 3. It's less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this is my answer. In that case, my answer is A. Now I have a system of equations. Why do they call it a system of equations? Because I have two equations with two variables, A and B. The variable does not matter. People are used to X and Y all the time. If they change the letters or the variables, it does not matter. You solve the same way. The easiest way, there's many ways how to do this. Okay, I'll show you the math, but also, if you have a multiple choice question and you have no idea what to do, plug these answers in, all right? The first value, it will be the A value, and this will be the B value. If you have no idea, you have no time to solve the problem, plug in each value. So negative 2 here, you plug it for negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 will give you negative 4. And B is 1, so negative 4 plus 1 is now 5. So right there, you can cross it out. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Uh, 2, 2 times 2 is 4. Plus B is 1, that's 5, so that works out. And then you're going to use the same values for the second equation. 2 is the A minus B, which is 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the answer should be B. Okay? So as you can see, I'm showing you how to plug in values. Is that what we want to do right now? No, that's not the idea. So let me show you how to solve this. And the reason I'm showing you is because a lot of these problems, or many times, they won't be multiple choice. So you have to give they will give you a box and you have to write your answer in there. All right, so let's solve it. How do we write this? How do we solve this system of equations? The first thing is I'm going to add the two equations. And the idea is that when I add the equations, one of the variables will cancel. How do I know which one will cancel? If the coefficients, if the numbers here in front of the B or the A are opposite. I have a two here. I, mean, I have a one if there's no number. Here you have a positive 1, and here you have a negative 1. So the b's are opposite to each other. Like I said before, I'm going to add the two equations. 2a plus 1a gives me 3a. b minus b, they cancel out because they have opposite signs. 5 plus 1 is 6, divided by 3, because I have to leave the a by itself. So this 3 is multiplying, so I divide by 3 by 3, and the a, 6 divided by 3 is... 2. As you can see, that's the 2 that I have. All right, as soon as I have one of the variables, I have the value, the answer for 1, I just go back to any of the equations and I plug these two. The easiest equation is, you know, either one of them, it doesn't matter. Either equation you use, you'll get the same answer. Let's use the first one. 2a plus b equals 5. My goal is to find the value of b. I want to plug in the value of a, which is 2, so I have 2 times 2 plus b equals 5. 2 times 2 gives me 4 plus b equals 5. Remember, I'm looking for the value of b. I got to leave the b by itself, so I got to subtract 4 on both sides. And now b equals to 1. 5 minus 4 is 1. As you can notice, the answer is 2 and the b is 1. Let's go to 2b. 
Same idea, if you have to plug in those values, you plug it in. If not, let's solve it. Before, you notice that I added the two equations and I canceled one of the variables. This is called elimination or cancellation or mostly combinations. That's a different name. When they give you an equation where one of the variables is by itself, the whole idea is they want you to substitute, right? Substitute this value into the other equation. Instead of the x, replace it by a minus 4y. So I will write the first equation, and this is called substitution. Instead of the x, I write x equals, so I'm going to write all this. For the parenthesis, instead of the x, I'm going to write 8 minus 4y plus 5y equals to 3. So I substitute the value of x. Now I just need to work with this equation, and if you notice, I only have y and y, so now this is only one variable. I work with this. I got to distribute 24, 3 times negative 4 is negative 12y, and then I bring down the 5y equals 3. If I have the variables on the same side, I combine them. I bring down the 24. And now this negative 12 plus 5 is 12 minus 5 is 7. And I keep the sign of the bigger number. So it's negative 7y equals to 3. Okay. Now I just need to solve for y. Okay. Remember, this is y. So I got to cancel the 24. Minus 24 is positive. So I subtract on both sides. 24 minus 24 is 0. Bring down the negative 7y. 3 minus 24 is negative 21, right? 24 minus 3 is 21, and I keep the sign of the bigger number. Last step, I got to cancel the negative 7. That is multiplying the y. Divide by negative 7 on both sides. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 gives me 1y. Negative divided by negative is positive. 21 divided by 7 gives me 3, okay? And now I have one of the values as you can see let me see here i have a y3 and here i have a y3 so i can cross this one and i can cross this one now i have two choices how do i know the value of x i go back and plug it back in same thing that we did over here i choose one of the equations and i replace the a value right same thing here because i want to plug back the y the easiest one is here because the x is by itself. So I have x equals 8 minus 4 times y. This is an 8, by the way, I'm sorry. 4 times y is 3. 8, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. 8 minus 12 is negative 4. Again, if you're not using calculator, then how do you solve this? You do 12 minus 8 is 4, and I bring the sign of the bigger number, which is the 12. So x is negative 4, y is 3. x is negative 4, y is 3. My answer is A. Another system of equations, okay? This is a little bit harder because now there's no variable by itself. And as before, I had opposite signs, right? Opposite signs. So... The trick here is the following. The idea is to cancel either the x's or the y's, right? So what happens when I have something like this is that I flip the coefficients, meaning I will multiply the first equation by the coefficient of the second one, and I multiply the second equation by the coefficient of the first one. 8 times 6 will give me 48x, right? And 6 times 8 will give me 48x. But do these two have opposite signs? No. That means I have to put a negative in one of them. So negative 8 times 6 will give me negative 48x, and now they have opposite signs, right? That's my idea. Flip the numbers, the coefficients, and make one of them negative, okay? Now, I multiply the x, but I have to do that with every single one of them, right? I just did this. Now it goes with the y. Negative 8 times 7 is negative 56 y equals negative 8 times 9, negative 72. And I do the same process with the second one. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 9 
six, 54, I'm sorry, my hand away. 6 times 11 equals, right? 6 times 11 gives me 66. And now, the same as the other ones, I add. Every time I have that, I'm adding. That's the reason I want opposite signs. So when I add 48 minus 48, it cancel out. I get zero. Negative 56 plus 54, that gives me negative 2. Why? Negative 72 plus 66 gives me negative 6. Last step, divided by whatever numbers with the variable. Negative, negative is positive. So I have y equals negative, negative is positive. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I got one of the answers. As you can see, I have, I'm sorry, I said, I said 3 and I wrote 2. <laughs> 3, sorry. As you can see, I have a 3 here. Where else? And I have a 3 at the end. So, I can cross those out. As soon as I get an answer, I go back and plug it into the original. So, let's take the first one, for example. 6x plus 7y equals 9. 6x plus 7 times 3 equals 9. 6x plus 21 equals 9. Subtract the 21. We have to make sure that we are really proficient and really good at solving equations because we're going to be solving equations all the time. 21 cancel. I bring down the 6x. 9 minus 21 is 21 minus 9, which is 12. And I bring the sign of the bigger number. Divided by 6, divided by 6, sorry. Negative 2 divided by 6 gives me negative 2. And my answer is negative 2, comma, 3. Now, something that I haven't done, negative 2, and my answer is this. If you want to make sure that this is right, you got to go back and plug in each of these in the two equations to make sure that your answer will be 9 and 11. Okay? Now let's get into our rational expressions. We're going to simplify a couple of them. We're going to multiply, divide, and we're going to solve the rational equation as well. So every time they're saying... They're asking me to simplify. That means I have to cancel something. Because I have pluses in between or minuses in between, I'm not able to cancel only the x squared with the x squared. That's a no-no. As soon as I have a plus in between, now that turns into 1 and 1, right? If I want to cancel something, I have to cancel the whole thing with the whole thing, which in this case, they're different, so I'm not able to. How do we solve this? By factoring. So I get to factor this trinomial on the top and this trinomial on the bottom. So the factoring mean goes, I need two numbers that when I multiply, I'm going to get the last number. So my product is the last number. My sum is the middle number. Two numbers that you multiply, you get 8. But when you add or subtract, you get 9. That's right. 8 times 1. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. As soon as I get those numbers, I'm pretty much done. The x squared in the beginning, I break it into x and x. And then I bring these two numbers down. Because both of them are positive, then I have a positive 8 and a positive 1. Same idea on the bottom. Product and sum. Two numbers that you most bring a negative 4. When you add, you get negative 3. You can do 2 times 2, or you can do 4 times 1. 2 times 2, but because the product is negative, one of them has to be negative. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and we need a negative 3, so it doesn't work. So let me try the 4 and the 1. 4 times 1 is 4. One of them has to be negative, therefore the bigger number has to be negative. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. That's what I meant by the bigger number has to be negative, because the sum is negative. So my two numbers are negative 4 and 1. As soon as I have that, Whatever variable you have here to the second power, you break it into two, x and x. And you bring my, the two numbers, negative 4 plus 1. And now I'm done factoring. At this point, what I have to do is I need to see if now they have common factors, meaning the full parenthesis is equal to the full parenthesis. I see that I have an x plus 1 on the top, x plus 1 on the bottom, so I can cancel x plus 1, x plus 1. 
my final answer is x plus 8 over x minus 4. x plus 8, x plus 8 over x minus 4. All right? Uh, let's do one more. Same idea. Same idea. We have rational expressions. Rational means you have a fraction. That's what rational means. You have a fraction. Same as before, I have to factor all of that. Right? Now you have two rational expressions multiplying. You see? This is multiplying that. I got to factor every single one of them. So let's do it. Again, my product. Let's go here. My product has to be 25. And the sum has to be 10. And the numbers are 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 plus 5 is 10. So the y square and break it into y and y and the two numbers i bring it to plus five and plus five all right over the bottom this is a difference of squares how do i solve a different squares how do i factor it two factors again square root of y square gives me y so I take the square root of the first one and I put it in the beginning. Same as before, the y square, y square brings it into y and y. Because the difference in squares, then one of the signs is positive and the other one is negative. And then I take the number here and I do square root of nine, which is three. This is nine, by the way, sorry. I do a square root of this number, therefore I put that three here and that three there. All right, and that's my first fraction times Factor this out. If you notice, I don't have a minus in between, and this is not a trinomial. It only has two terms. Here I have one, two, three terms. It's a trinomial. Here is not. So the first thing that you always want to check is if you have a greatest common factor. GCF. Common factor between these two, you have a y as a common factor, so you take the y out. And then there's nothing else in common. You open a parenthesis. You divide each one by the y. So y squared divided by y, the answer is y. Plus 3y divided by y gives you 3. All right? Now the bottom. Is there anything that I can do with the bottom? It's only y plus 5. Nothing that I can factor. No greatest common factor, no difference of squares, or anything else. So I just bring the y plus 5. Okay? And now that's a, that's a factor. Every time I multiply in two rational expressions, you see the dot right there? That means multiplication. As soon as I factor, the only thing that I need to do to, to multiply is this. Look, extend the line. If I extend the line, if there's nothing between two parentheses, I know that they're all multiplying. So I didn't need to do anything else, no, no extra things. Okay? As soon as I multiply, which I'm not doing FOIL, if I do FOIL, I'll come back to this, and I don't want that. As soon as I have all the factors, it's time to simplify, which means I cancel one from the top, one from the bottom. Look at this, what, what's plus 5? Y plus 5, Y plus 5. Only one, one from the top, one from the bottom. Y plus 3, Y plus 3. I have left the y and the y plus 5. At the bottom, y minus 3. Nothing else that I can do, so I bring those two. So I bring the y and the y plus 5. And that's what's left on the top. And the bottom, the only thing left is y minus 3. And y fly, but y minus 3 in the bottom. This is my answer. Okay, so that's the idea. We need to know how to factor. I'm going to link a video on the bottom to show you all the factoring so you can review all the factoring. It's a great thing to review, very important. Here we go. So I need to factor here. First thing I did check is always greatest common factor. This is a G by the way, greatest common factor. Here I have two terms, common factor, dx is a common factor. So I take the x as a, as a common factor and I open parentheses. My first term divided by x gives me x minus x divided by x gives me one i always check the inside of the parentheses to see if there's anything else that i can do i have a minus one so this is a, a square i'm sorry but perfect square but the x is not a perfect square so there's nothing else that i need to do 
fact of the trinomial product and sum two numbers that you multiply get two not too many choices two times one but my sum is negative so that means these two numbers have to be negative negative two times negative one gives me positive two negative two minus one gives me negative three so these are my numbers as soon as I get my numbers I just break the x squared into x and x and I bring my numbers minus two minus one and I'm done before we move on uh, let me review division let's see that I have one half divided by three-fifths every time you divide in fractions we there's something that's called keep change flip we keep this first fraction one half we change the sign of division into a multiplication and then we flip the second fraction and at this point we just multiply across right like we did before so that's how you do division so in this case I keep this first fraction I keep it I change the division into a multiplication and I flip the second fraction so the x squared minus 1 is going to go to the denominator the x squared minus 1 as we did before is a difference of squares all right difference of squares x and x plus and minus square root of 1 is 1 and 1 okay so remember I'm keeping my first fraction I'm changing the sign and I'm flipping this fraction this goes to the bottom and my denominator goes to the top let's factor this is a trinomial product and sum two numbers that you multiply get one not too many choices but my sum is negative that means I have to change both negative one times negative one gives me positive one negative one minus one gives me negative two so how do I factor this trinomial I break it into two the x squared goes into x and x and then I bring the two numbers minus one minus one same as the previous problem and that was the reason I I went from multiplication to division is because now I multiply how do I multiply look at this done multiplication all right you just extend that now let's simplify one from the top one from the bottom one from the top one from the bottom anything else look at this x minus one one from the top one from the bottom anything else x minus two on the top nope x plus one on the top nope so my final answer is I bring back whatever is left and on the bottom I have x minus two x plus one uh, where's my answer x times x minus one x times x minus one x minus two here we go again I have a video link on the description for this rational functions as well all right so you can practice this uh, topic now we're going to get into adding and subtracting for that we're going to go to the easy problem first you know this one which is a little bit much bigger than that so let's go to the easier problem smaller at least and then we go back to that one the idea on this video is to finish with uh, rational functions all right second part will be in a different topic again this is a review for intermediate algebra if you know all this material you will be able to place into college algebra all right let's go now when we add and or multiply i'm sorry when we add and or subtracting it's a different story i have one half plus one third if i'm adding fractions now i need to have the same denominator okay so i need to have a common denominator what's the idea when you have two denominators the easiest way to get a common denominator is to multiply each other so this three i'm going to multiply times two and if i multiply the denominator i need to multiply the numerator same as the two to get it equal i need to multiply times three times three and now i have three times two three times two and now it's the same denominator at the end you multiply this you multiply this and then you add three times one is three one times two is two three plus two is five and i keep the same denominator that's how i add or subtract for that case 
uh, rational expressions or fractions. That's what I'm going to do here. I need to get the same denominator. Remember, because I have a plus here, then that's one thing. I can just take the x by itself. No, no, no. That x plus 1 is one thing. So I need a common denominator. A common denominator is a combination of both. So my common denominator will be x and the x plus 1. That's my least common denominator. So how can I turn x plus 1 into x times x plus 1? I got to multiply times x. Whatever I multiply the denominator, I have to multiply the numerator so my thing does not change. And now I have x times x plus 1, which is what I needed. Same idea here. How can I turn x into x times x plus 1? What's missing? This parenthesis. Therefore, I got to multiply times x plus 1 on the denominator and the numerator as well. And if you notice, look at my denominator for the first fraction, x times x plus 1. The denominator for the second fraction, x times x plus 1. So now I have the same denominator. I bring this denominator to my first fraction, or my first, first rational expression, right? x times x plus 1. And the top, I just multiply this, x times 9. Gives me 9x, right? Plus. My denominator, I keep it x times x plus 1. Remember, the idea was to have the same denominators, and now that's what I have. And now I multiply the top, the 3 times the x plus 1. Be aware that you have to distribute this thing. 3 times x gives you 3x, and 3 times 1 gives you 3. Because now I have the denominators are equal, then I keep my denominator. That's the whole idea. Remember the fractions here? I had a 6. I had a 6. I didn't add 6 plus 6 is 12. No, I kept. This turns into a 6. And this turns into a 6. I kept the denominator as a 6. In my case, x times x plus 1, x times x plus 1, I keep the denominator. But I add or subtract the top. In my case, I'm adding. So 9x plus 3x gives me... 12x, and there's a 3 remaining here, so I put a 3 right there, plus 3. Now, which of these looks like this? 12x plus 3, this is the only one that has to add x plus 3, over x times x plus 1, and my answer is that. All right? So this is an introduction of adding. Again, look at the description. I will link videos on this particular topic. Now let's go and do the little monster over here, our e problem, okay? Now we have subtraction. You, you know the idea about subtracting, right? The idea is to have the same denominator. Do they look the same right now? No, they don't. Because they have pluses in between, there's nothing that I can do individually. So the only way for me to get the same denominator is if I factor them. So I have to factor the denominators because I need a common denominator. Again, product and sum. Two numbers, you get 20, but when you add, you get 9. You have 10 times 2, 20 times 1, or 4 times 5. 4 times 5 is 20, 4 plus 5 is 9. So my first denominator, that x squared breaks into x and x, and my numbers are plus 4, plus 5. All right? Little squishy right there. I'm sorry. Now, the top does not change. Minus, the top does not change. I'm factoring the denominators. Product and sum. Keep that in mind. Two numbers you multiply get 12. You got 12 times 1, 6 times 2, or 4 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 plus 3 is 7. So my numbers are 4 and 3. Therefore, I have x, x, and I bring my numbers, which is plus 4 and plus 3. Now, I need to see if I have the same factors. Remember, this was an x plus 4, right? x plus 4 is here, x plus 4 is there. So that's part of my common factor. All right. What else? I have an x plus 5 here. 
but I don't have it here, but still I need to have an x plus 5. So that's part of my common factor. So this is this denominator. I'm good to go right now. But hold on. Is this the same as this? No, I don't have the x plus 3. That means I have to put the x plus 3 as well. So these three factors, these two denominators have to be here. x plus 4 is here, x plus 5 is here, we're good. x plus 4 is here, x plus 3 is here, we're good. So this is my common factor, my common denominator. Now the question is, how can I turn this denominator into this? What's missing? 5, 4, the x plus 3 is missing. Therefore, I got to multiply my this, my denominator, times the x plus 3. If I multiply my denominator, I got to multiply my numerator. Same thing that we did before. Nothing has changed. The top and the bottom. Same idea with this denominator. x plus 4 is there. x plus 3 is there, not the x plus 5. So times x plus 5, the denominator x plus 5, the numerator, okay? And now we know that I have a common denominator. So let's bring that out here. x plus 4 plus 5 plus 3 minus denominator. I'm just keeping the same denominator. By the way, if you notice, I'm not going to write the three terms in the same order, but we know that they're same because they're multiplying. As long as I had the three of them, plus four plus five plus three, plus four plus five plus three, right? Common denominator. What happened to the top? I gotta to multiply that at x times x plus three. x times x gives me x squared. x times three gives me three x. And now I do the same here on the other side. The 4 times x is going to give me 4x. And the 4 times 5 gives me a 20. Same as the other problem that we have. As soon as I have the same denominator, I keep the denominator. So I'm going to keep the x plus 4. Does not matter which order I have it. Plus 5. As long as I have the same three terms on both denominators. And now let me do the, the top. I am this minus this. Be careful, this is going to affect this, the negative is going to affect the 20 and the 4x. x squared, there's no x squared, so I bring the x squared. 3x minus 4x, negative 1x. And now I'm done with this, what's left, the 20? Don't forget, this negative affects the 20, so negative and positive becomes negative. Okay, am I done? Not really. Do I have an answer like this? No. Why? Because if you notice, I have a trinomial right now. And I need to know if I can factor as well. Maybe I can factor and cancel something from the bottom. That's the idea right now. Okay, so let's factor this out. Product and sum. You notice we use, we're using this a lot product and sum. Two numbers you can multiply getting at 20. You have 20 times 1, 10 times 2, 5 times 4. Because the product is negative, one of them has to be negative. I look at the sum and my sum is negative, therefore my bigger number is negative. Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So my numbers are x, remember the x squared breaks into x minus 5, what's the other one? x plus 4. And the same denominator, okay? Plus 4, plus 5, plus 3. Plus 4, x plus 4, x plus 5, x plus 3. I'm sorry, I'm running like a little space over here. Okay, I have these two on the top and I have these three in the bottom. Can I simplify something? X minus five, no. X plus four, yes. Here we go, X plus four with X plus four. 
and nothing else because the x plus 3 there's nothing on the top so what do what do i have left x minus 5 on the top x plus 5 x plus 3 x minus 5 on the top x minus 5 on the top x plus 5 x plus 3 all right i know the process is a little long it's a lot of factoring but this is like one of the most like the hardest problems you can see okay a lot of factoring to finish this section and this lesson let's do the last problem okay which the only difference and i hope you're looking at this scene is i have an equal sign you see the plus i have an equal sign look at this then now this is an equation it's an addition but it's also an equation okay there are many ways how to solve this i'm going to show you what i think is the easiest one again at one point I need to have the same denominators, something like that, okay? So I need to factor all these denominators. Let's do that quick. Product and sum, all right? I'm gonna write this underneath. So uh, two numbers, you multiply multiplying at three. When you add, you get two. So that's gonna give me x and x, and my numbers are three times one, but one of them has to be negative. So it's gonna be negative three plus one let's double check negative three times one is negative three negative three plus one is negative two excellent and i keep what i have in the numerator plus two terms difference in squares x and x difference in squares one plus one minus square root of nine three three I keep the same denominator, numerator, x plus 2. All right? Factor again, denominator. The main concern are the denominators. Two numbers that you multiply get 3. Not too many, 3 times 1, right? So my numbers are x plus 3 and x plus 1. I'm going a little faster. I'm hoping that by now you know the trinomials. 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. Excellent. And I keep the numerator. So now, what's the easiest thing that I can tell you how to solve this uh, rational function equation? Is the problem here is the following. When I have an equation, I would love to have x plus 3 equals 10. Right? Easy equation. But if I give you a denominator, that's going to be the problem. The denominator is the problem. So I don't want to have denominators. So the idea is to get rid of these this denominators. Okay, that's my plan. Now, how can I cancel a denominator? How can I cancel something that is dividing? Denominator is on the denominator. How can I cancel something that is on the denominator? By multiplying, right? If I have, I don't know, x over 3, and I want to cancel this denominator, I multiply times 3, right? Let's pretend that this is an equation. x over 3 equals 10. If I want to cancel that 3, I multiply times 3 on both sides. This 3 will cancel that 3, and the x is by itself. So something that is divided, I multiply, and that's how I cancel. Okay? That's the same plan here. The same plan is to multiply. So if I want to cancel this denominator, the x minus 3, I'm going to multiply times x minus 3. And if you notice, I put a parenthesis in the whole equation because I'm going to multiply everything on the equation, both sides of the equation. If I'm going to cancel the x plus 1, I'm going to multiply times x plus 1. Right? Those two will cancel those two. Great. Next denominator. I have an x plus 3. That's an x minus 3, not an x plus 3. So that means I have to multiply times x plus 3. All right. That x plus 3 canceled that. What about this minus 3? It's already there. So this will cancel the x minus 3, so I don't have to multiply anything else. Let's go to the next denominator. x plus 3 is right there. I don't have to do it again. So this will cancel this. Amazing. X plus 1. It's already there. Okay? 
So that means if I multiply this whole equation by these three factors, I'm going to put that over 1, so you understand that this is on the numerator, all my denominators will cancel. So what I'm, what's going to happen is I'm going to multiply these three times each one of them. Okay, so I'm going to write x minus 1, let's start over here, x minus 1 times all those three. So I have to write all those three. x plus 3, what else? x minus 3, and x plus 1. We'll erase this in a minute. x plus 1 everything divided by 1 times my denominator so my denominator will not change x minus 3 and what's the other one x plus 1 okay so I'm doing this so you visualize what's gonna happen you're gonna have four terms on the top and those two in the denominator plus x plus 2 times the same thing times those three x plus three in a minute we'll uh, simplify x minus three and x plus one over one times my well we just did this right one times the denominator so my denominator will not change x plus 3 times x minus 3. All right. Equals. Same idea. All that times 2x plus 5. So I'm going to have. That's why I started all the way in the left. Because you see that? I'm, I'm going to be needing a little bit of more space. That times the three of them. x plus 3. x plus minus 3. Let's see if it's going to be able to check. Whoa, there you go. We fitted the last one. Very nice. Over this times that, which is not going to change. So I'm hoping you understand what's going to happen now. Okay? Let's see the common factors between the top and the bottom. Let's start with him on the left. Do have common factors? Look at the x minus 3, x minus 3. Cancels. x plus 1, x plus 1. Cancels. What's left? this two so this remains x minus one times x plus three so whatever doesn't uh, get cancelled is left plus but now look there's no denominator that was the whole idea about doing all this process x plus three x plus three x minus three x minus three what's left x plus two times x plus 1. Much smaller problem. I hope you see that. Plus 3 on the last one. Plus 1. What's left? 2x plus 5. By the way, this is a monster. Okay, so you understand that. You're not, you're not going to get a lot of problems like this. Alright, so it's a very long process and there's a lot of knowledge that you need to know. Now I have that. If you notice, I have two parentheses plus two parentheses equal two parentheses. Those are factors. What do I need to do? I need to find the value of x. Look at this. x equals negative 7 over 3. x equals 3 over 7, right? Those are the choices. The value of x. I'm solving. I'm looking for the value of x. That means I got to multiply this. These two terms, I'm going to multiply. x times x is going to give me x squared. x times 3 gives me... 3x. Negative 1 times x gives me negative 1x. I don't have to write the 1. Negative 1 times 3 gives me negative 3. Plus whatever I get from here. These two parentheses, x times x. Oops. Yeah, it's x squared. I'm sorry. x times 1. 2 times x. And 2 times 1 equals the same idea here, right? Two parentheses. 2x times x is 2x squared. Let's see if it's going to fit everything. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. 5 times x. 
I'm hoping the use of the lines is helping you the order. 5 times negative 3, negative 15. Once I have that, look at my equal sign. Be aware of my equal sign. I'm going to combine like terms on both sides. x squared plus x squared is going to give me 2x squared. Right? 3x minus 1x is 2x. Plus 1x is 3x. Plus 2x is 5x. Now look like the constants right here. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And this is equal to, let's do the other side. 2x squared, that's the only square that I have. Then negative 6 plus 5 is going to give me negative 1x minus 15. All right, we're getting there. So I have a 2x on this side and I have a 2x on the other side. Square, I'm sorry. If I subtract by negative 2x squared on both sides, both x squares are going to cancel. And that's some help. Let's give some space. So what do I have left? 5x minus 1. And in the other side, I have negative x minus 15. Again, it's a much easier problem by now. Solve for x. Let's cancel this x. So plus x. Plus x on both sides. And that's going to give me 6x minus 1. This x is canceled and I have negative 15. Almost done, guys. Plus 1. And this one's canceled out, and I have 6x equals to negative 14 divided by 6, divided by 6. The 6 cancels, and I have x equals, uh, can I simplify 14 and the 6? If I divide by 2, it's going to give me negative 7, and if I divide by 2, it gives me positive 3, and now I have x equals negative 7 over 3. Again, long process, we did a lot. This review is negative 7 over 3. So let's check the answers for 3F. Negative 7 over 3 is our first choice. Okay? So guys, uh, I'm going to stop there because this is kind of long. Let's stop, and now you know that we have a second part. Not as long as this. So stay tuned. Please um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notifications bell so you can get... Uh, notify when we upload uh, more more videos again i'm going to put links on the description so you can review individually these topics all right guys thank you for watching i'll see you next one bye bye